Welcome to the Brain Warriors Way podcast. I'm Dr. Daniel Amen. And I'm Tana Amen. Here we teach you how to win the fight for your brain to defeat anxiety, depression, memory loss, ADHD, and addictions. The Brain Warriors Way podcast is brought to you by Amen Clinics, where we've transformed lives for three decades using brain spect imaging to better target treatment and natural ways to heal the brain. For more information, visit amenclinics.com. The Brain Warriors Way podcast is also brought to you by BrainMD, where we produce the highest quality nutraceutical products to support the health of your brain and body. For more information, visit brainmdhealth.com. Welcome to the Brain Warriors Way podcast. So welcome. Uh, we have a very special guest today, Dr. Stephen Masley, who is a physician, a chef, uh, nutritionist, and uh, a best-selling author and public television personality who has just recorded his third national public television special, The Better Brain Solution, and he has a book coming out with that same title. We're really excited to talk to Stephen and about how to make health delicious. Yes, and welcome. And so I love this combination of chef and I know. physician and nutritionist. Um, so welcome to the Brain Warriors Way podcast. It's like Way the best podcast. of both of us. That's fantastic. I, and I'm <laughs> delighted to be here with both of you. So how do did you get excited about uh, putting these three specialties together? I mean, both, you know, so you're like Tana and I mixed right. into one, although not quite as cute as Tana. <laughs> well, Agreed. it's a matter of opinion. <laughs> yeah. Well, I started, you know, maybe as a regular physician. My challenge was I really wanted to keep people out of the hospital and prevent problems. And that was my goal from the beginning. And I was one of the first physicians in the country to do group visits wow. where I would see 20 people at a time for diabetes or heart disease, depression. And what I learned from them was they didn't just need detailed information. They kept saying, well, why don't you just give me some recipes <laughs> And I'll cook whatever, you, if it's easy to prepare and I can yep. find the ingredients in my grocery store and it's delicious, that's all we'll cook. I love and that. And so yeah. I took that seriously. So, I mean, here I'm a physician doing research studies with group visits and I decided I had to go back to chef school. I'd already, I catered dinners in college to pay for some bills. That's so, awesome. I mean, I like cooking. But, you know, the idea of going to chef school to improve my recipes was, and it took a year. I mean, that was a... As I kept working, I did every other weekend and like three to four evenings every night for a year. That's My family fantastic. was so supportive. That is fantastic. I love that. We found something very similar. So as we started to really implement this idea of functional medicine, of um, you know getting people healthy with lifestyle, the recipes were the thing that was was really driving it. People needed simple ways to do it. And so I'm like, how did I get stuck in this writing cookbooks thing forever? <laughs> so especially for somebody who couldn't cook, but I, I have to hand it to you because I don't know a lot of doctors who will take the time to do that. So, I mean, we make the perfect sort of team because I do that, but that's, that's amazing that you took the time to do that and you realize the power of food, you know? So we should start with food is medicine or food is poison. And the health of our country is going the wrong way. It's sort of the whole idea behind the Brain Warriors Way podcast. The real weapons of mass destruction are highly processed, pesticide sprayed, high glycemic, low fiber, food-like substances stored in plastic containers. And, uh, yes. you know, we see the, you know, massive rise in obesity in diabetes, in um, hypertension, in depression and dementia. And I think both you and I believe 50% of that has got to be food related. And so getting your food right is absolutely, absolutely. critical. Well, especially when you start throwing in pesticides and toxins right. and glycos. I mean, it's more than for the brain. The brain is so sensitive that 
it is like the canary in the coal mine. That's what goes first. And when we all these processed foods, I I think it's sixty to eighty percent of all memory loss and dementia is wow. probably related to some combo of the wrong food instead of the right food, the wrong nutrients, and then you you had toxins on top of it, like they come from food um, or from you know our environment. It's pretty amazing. I think we could actually get rid of at least sixty percent of memory loss and cognitive decline with just changing the food we eat what a and maybe up to 80 to 90 percent when we looked at a whole holistic pattern to go with it that's pretty amazing that's actually amazing in november i have a new book called memory rescue coming out and it's the same idea you, you know it's like how do you prevent alzheimer's disease or even get it back if you're headed to the dark place it's you prevent or attack all of the risk factors that steal your mind. And I came up with a mnemonic called Bright Minds to help you remember the 11 major risk factors. But the T in Bright Minds is toxins. The D is diabetes. Um, and it's, it's just so important to have a simple solution because so many people are like, oh, I don't know what to do. I get conflicting advice. Uh, so in your experience, Stephen, what are the important things for people to do to have a better brain? Well, and I love the way you said that because we've got to make it easy or right. it's not going to happen. So I, I think of like five steps, five simple, easy to follow steps of give people the right foods to add, the essential nutrients they shouldn't miss. There's activities like moving the body is so important for the brain. I think we underestimate that. Managing our stress and avoiding toxins. And that if we do those five things right, and I think our challenge is to make them easy so if people can follow it, that would have a tremendous impact on and my data from my clinic is not only do we prevent memory loss, but people's executive brain function, their processing speed. It's like how fast does their brain computer work? In, and the average person in a randomized controlled study improved by 25%. So I know not only can we help delay memory loss or prevent it, we can improve your function today so you're sharper, quicker, and more productive. So I have a question. Um, I know the three of us think very differently, obviously. I mean, we really think that lifestyle matters, food matters. I mean, obviously, you know, the work we do is very different than I think the average medical people. Um, but I have a question because I, just today, I, not today, this week, I dealt with two people. One had Crohn's and one is getting gastric bypass. And I asked them, so what did your doctor say? I'm not a physician, so I want to make sure I'm sticking within my scope of practice. What did your physician tell you about food? What did they tell you about nutrition? Absolutely nothing. Now, how does that make sense for someone with Crohn's or someone getting gastric bypass? They just gave them medicine and said not one word about nutrition. Or changing. They have no training in this. But that's so a travesty. School, you get that that's a travesty. Thousands and thousands yes. of hours of education. I had 16 hours on nutrition. So, what probably causes 50% or more of the illnesses that we all see in our practices, we get very little training, and doctors don't do what they're not trained to do. Well, the one with Crohn's actually went on to say that the doctor said nutrition played very, a very small role and that it was That's going to be the terrible. immunosuppressant medication that was going to be the important piece. And they removed a large section of bowel. Now I just, how is this okay? Because what is bad for your gut, what is bad for your heart is bad for your brain, right? Am I, I mean, come on. I this is completely agree with you. You're, I mean, but that's just a sad, ref our standard American system today is focused on diagnosing and treating a disease with either pills, pharmaceuticals, or a procedure. So that's, that, but that doesn't mean our, the population is limited to that. I think the three of us are trying to be warriors. Right, you have to be your change. own best advocate, correct? Yeah. So we have to just well, retrain people. People listening to the Brain Warriors Way podcast, you know, odds are they want a different way. Um, so 
tell us about the kinds of patients you see in your clinic in Florida. I, I see people who are just trying to improve their health. We do optimal health assessments. So we measure over a hundred markers of aging, plaque growth, cognitive brain function, hormones, laboratories, bone densities. It's really a holistic assessment combined with very detailed nutrition, fitness, and stress management assessment. So is it so fair I, to say you're a functional physician? You're oh yeah, anti-aging? I've, I've been involved with functional medicine since its inception, I think. I missed the first meeting, okay. but um, That's <laughs> I mean, awesome. that was like 23 years ago. I think I've been involved intimately with it for at least 22 of the 23 years. Of okay. So Dr. Masley's in Florida. I get people all the time asking me for referrals to people who, you know, are in functional medicine. So, um, just FYI, um, very important. St. Petersburg, Florida. We're actually thinking of a clinic next year in Miami. So we'll be closer. Um, but St. Nice. Petersburg is just such a beautiful area. Um, when is your new book, The Better Brain Solution, coming out? It comes out January 2nd. January so, 2nd. So new year, new you. New year, new brain. Perfect. Right. New brain. Like and it. what we have both seen, you know, us with our imaging work, is you're not stuck with the brain you have. You can make it better. And since it uses 20 to 30% of the calories you consume, what you feed it, really does matter. And as a functional medicine doctor, you, you know, all of us have learned about leaky gut. Not many people know about leaky brain, that if your gut is not healthy, it actually begins to open up some of the connections uh, in your blood vessels that will allow toxins into your brain. Do you talk about that at all? I, I do, because, well, Especially the whole concept of this gut brain is gut brain connection is so well established. I think it's beyond any refutable doubt at this point that your gut communicates with your brain, your brain communicates with your gut. And probiotic of the you know ten top foods, I would ask someone to add every right. day. Probiotic foods are going to have to be are a strong part of that, and so is fiber mm -hmm. to feed those um, healthy bacteria that those trillions of bacteria in our gut. So they are into, you know, they, they re, our gut helps us remove toxins. Yep. It processes and improves our vitamin levels. It, it causes or can remove inflammation. It's just an essential part. And the communication, the whole immune system, a huge part of our immune system that impacts our brain, um, as you know, is in our gut. So I, I think the, the, and leaky gut, it just gets so many toxins floating into your system yep. and the in inflammatory and oxidation from that's amazing. So, so, so for people who don't know, when you say probiotic foods, what are your favorite ones? Um, well, I sauerkraut, you know, is a really right. easy thing. If, if you're dairy intolerant, then I don't have yogurt or kefir, but if you can tolerate, I'm okay with so, you know, those people who tolerate dairy, I'd let them have yogurt, you know, organic yogurt or kefir, but kombucha or miso. Um, those are all great sources. But kimchi. And kimchi. Um, and, but I'm but also probably going to give I like most kimchi. People, it's terrible. No, I like it. You just so don't like me after the, I eat the it. The principle I always go <laughs> on with is there should be no suffering. So, I have so, to, but I have to so add Brain something. MD, uh, uh, our supplement company, actually makes uh, pro brain biotics right. that has been shown in studies to help support mood and anxiety levels. I really like sauerkraut, but this is a really important point. Um, Tana likes kimchi, right. it's an am amazing probiotic food. Right. Uh, um, I hate it, so I'm not going to make myself suffer. I want to add, I'm going to find something that I really like that fits me. And if I don't like it, like a lot of people just don't like fish, but the omega-3 fatty acids from fish are really important. And so taking them as, as a, a high, high quality, quality supplement mm -hmm. can yes. be really helpful. Too. So I want to add something because you made a good point because we have a lot of people that we deal with that are dairy intolerant and the casein's not great for the brain and all that good stuff. So, yeah. but I discovered something really cool. So, um, 
sheep's milk yogurt doesn't seem to affect some people the same way that cow's milk yogurt does in some cases, but even for some mm-hmm. people that doesn't work well. Um, but I discovered something really cool, how to make your own coconut milk yogurt. So you can use coconut milk and you can put a probiotic in, and I'm curious what you both think about this. If you put a high quality probiotic, um, supplement into the coconut milk, and then you strain it and you let it sit for a while in your refrigerator, it actually becomes a really cool coconut milk yogurt and it doesn't have all the added sugars and chemicals. And See, I think that's terrific. The, anything, any of those it tastes great. options are great. Sheep and if, milk, you're, if you don't like these milk. foods, then please take a probiotic. I mean, that's right. as a supplement. You know, it, and people think, oh, they're billions. It's not that when you have, think of how many trillions are in our gut, you know, 25 billion to me is just kind of a nice, simple dose. I wish if you're not used to eating probiotics every day and eating 10 servings of fruit and vegetables every day, then I'd like people to start adding a probiotic to their system. It's, right. it's one of my top 10 foods that I think we need to have every day. Right. So either it's a probiotic food or a probiotic supplement. Right. And a fun thing like the coconut milk yogurt, I just talked about making your own. It actually tastes great. You can put it in other things and, you know, do your homemade granola, grainless granola that, that we, you know, you, I'm sure you know of a grainless granola you make at home and you put some coconut milk yogurt in it with your probiotics. It's awesome. So, so. it's very important because a lot of people say yogurt and health. And I want to make sure you read the label because most of the yogurt sold in stores, um, even healthy stores, is loaded with sugar. Or aspartame. And so... Yes. Um, I, you know, when I eat organic. More sugar than an ice cream. Right. Or they've got aspartame, which is as bad or worse. So so the yogurt has more sugar than ice cream. It's like insane. Right. Right. I mean, someone's trying to get a healthy food and they get totally deceived with it. It's really, that's right. awful. But sugar-free is so not better. So the trick is get organic, um, plain yogurt. And what I'll often do is put frozen blueberries in it. Stevia. Maybe a little stevia or erythritol yeah. and mix it up. Tastes great. Great for you. Um, yes. Read the label. And, read the label. And berries are definitely on my top 10 food list. Yeah. I mean, the, those pigments are so important for your brain. I want people to have either a cup of berries or mm. cherries yeah. every day. You can put them in a Perfect. smoothie. You could put them with coconut yogurt. You could have them just by themselves. Right. And they're low glycemic, so it's good. Yeah. yeah Very, I actually yeah. have a cup That's of That's a big myth that they have sugar. I mean, they really, right. the glycemic load on cherries and blueberries is like four. I mean, Much lower I mean, than other fruit. So yeah. Yes. Agree. And dates. <laughs> dates are terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have probiotics and we have berries. What are other brain foods? Well, I put number one is vegetables. I, I, I saw some really green leafy vegetables by themselves. If you have a cup of green leafies every day versus someone who doesn't, your brain is 11 years younger. Yeah. And you're happier. I mean, New study says oh, you're happier. The more veggies you eat, the happier you are. 11 so, years. I mean, that's yeah. amazing. And I love also beets because I think the big beet pigments, beets have this myth of being high sugar low, but their glycemic load is like five. They're really quite low. So beets and berries, um, but green leafies are just, I, they have so much fiber, vitamin K, potassium. They're loaded with nutrients. So I vegetables, I'd probably because... put number one. And we need to at least five, you know, five cups a day. Right. And beets help increase blood flow as well. That's why I like them. Yeah, so I know, I know if you serve me beets, you're in the mood for okay. love. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> this is a G-rated show for PG-13. Um, yes. But I like my green my green drinks, and I put a half a beet in there. So I don't put too many beets, you know, because I want to keep the sugar low. But I do want a yeah. half of a beet or one beet in my green drink for the juice. It's really good. Tastes great. Beet. <laughs> and then okay, we a have lot of beets. We have out there that are really good for your brain. So vegetables, way up there. Berries, definitely probiotic. But I, of the healthy fats, you know, the omega three long chain omega three from seafood. Right. Whether it's seaweed or oysters, right. clams, or love seaweed, salmon, any of wild salmon, any of those. So that's a. I mean, our brain is forty percent long chain omega three by weight. We need right. it to nourish it. Right. But nuts have gotten for years a bad rap. And I, all the data, and especially this new Mediterranean diet study, showed that if you eat extra nuts every day, you have less cognitive Thank decline you. and improved brain function. Yeah. So which nuts We're do with you, you like? 
Uh, My favorite six, almonds, pecans, walnuts, pistachios, hazelnuts, and macadamians. Those yeah. are my favorite Yay, those six. are mine too. Yep. Okay. So macadamia so oil. About, we use macadamia oil. What do you think about oil. cashews? Um, I'm fine with cashews, but I've never seen the kind of clinical data they just from using good. cashews I've seen from <laughs> the other nuts. But they taste good. Um, they but the macadamia good. nuts, um, they got a bad rap for so long, but macadamia nut oil for cooking is great. It has a really high smoke point. Well, I yeah, think it's the uh, calories in macadamia nuts, they're just loaded. Right. But they yeah. also have omega nines, which is a little different. So it's really good. They're they're just they're different. Yes. So they're good. So But the actual studies when they've looked at nuts for weight loss showed people if they ate one to two ounces at not a whole can. Right. But you have to one watch. Or two ounces a day, they lost weight yep. because they were full and satisfied. They're satisfied. So like, they're satisfying. But you know, one of the tricks I found yeah, is agreed. you have to when it says one ounce. You need to weigh that. Right. You need to measure well, it because if you just I do go one and, handful. Right. But the problem is, is it tastes so good that many people go, oh, this is good for me. So they end up with six. Yeah, don't lie to yourself. Okay. We and, and my, there's this thing called calorie amnesia. Yeah. That <laughs> people. So uh, I just well, suggest to people actually definitely get is associated with better brain health, better heart health. And weight loss, but you, there is a limit. Yeah, right. I mean, so you I can't just tell overdo people, almost anything. Right. So I tell people get them out and then put them away because if you don't put them away, you're going to keep eating them. They tend to taste really good. An avocado would be another awesome fat. We should have like a half an avocado every day, and that's become my favorite go-to cooking oil. Yeah, is avocado I like it oil. too. The, Why? The smoke point is over five. Is like yep. 520 degrees. It's delicious. I it's agree. It's got a nice flavor. It tastes great, right? Yeah. It's very neutral. It goes with many dishes. And if you want something to have like a ver olive oil flavor, you can cook initially with the avocado oil, turn it to simmer. Right. And then at the very end, drizzle on a little I bit like of extra that. virgin That's good. olive oil. We're going to be friends. I like this because I like avocado oil too. And I tell people I can use olive oil at low temperatures, but not high. So yes. that's a good, that's a good trick. I like that. Yes. It's so, a very good trick. Okay, so we have omega three seafood nuts, all, uh, olive oil. Yeah, so yeah, extra virgin olive oils. I mean, the Mediterranean diet side. I think they were that was like a slam dunk. Finally, that when we look at adding extra virgin olive oil, extra couple tablespoons a day, even though it had calories, mm -hmm. um, they clearly had better cognitive performance yeah. than the low fat eaters. And they had less cognitive decline than the low fat eaters. So, and we've got this whole it, crew of, of um, the medical community coming back out now and doing the whole no fat is bad again. W what's going on with that? I'm so confused. So they're starting to come back with, nope, you got to decrease your fat. I'm so confused by that. Well, the American Heart Association actually changed their position. I think it was last year uh, on fat and eating cholesterol. So um, we, we know, I mean, you know, cholesterol over 220, 230 is not really good for you. Um, but cholesterol under 160 <laughs> is associated with homicide, suicide, death from all causes. Yeah, because your hormones are And I'm seeing that more and more, whack. especially in the vegans uh, that I treat, and they're rabid about, mm -hmm. you know, not having any animal products. But their total cholesterol, I saw somebody recently, it was 113. And but depressed and anxious. I just worry yes. um, about the no fat, low fat. But their hormones message. are out of whack. Uh, mm -hmm. well, What's your thought on that? They get depressed Stephen? and it throws their hormones out of whack. Right. I totally agree with Tana there. If you don't have fat, one, your food, you don't have texture in your food. It's depressing eating. <laughs> if you don't have fat for your brain, you get depressed because your brain doesn't have any, your brain. It doesn't want to shrink. It needs fat to maintain itself. So we need healthy fats. And I right. think there are smart fats out there and we need more. I, I think the science is so solid for it there now. But it, remember, it takes 10 to 20 years for the medical community to make a shift. Right. And we're only about five to 10 years into this shift away from low fat to we're, we're not saying eat any fat. No one's saying eating more trans fat. Thing right. No this. one's right. Exactly. There are some fats that are clearly bad. So industrial raised animals, clearly that yes. fat is much worse for you. That's not great fat. Um, those saturated fats are significantly worse than other, than animals that are naturally raised, um, grass fed, free range. 
Um, and yeah, that should be more limited than some of the other fats. Right. So, trans so fats we're are shifting terrible. towards smart fats, but it's going to take another 10 to 15 years to get the medical community on board because they're usually that far behind. Excellent. So what do you eat every day? Well, a couple days a week, I start my morning fasting. I, you know, added some partial intermittent fasting for a couple days a week, two, three days a week. And on the days I do have breakfast, I, during the week, it's usually a shake, yeah. almond milk, uh, pro, a, a protein powder, 20 grams of protein. Uh, I usually do cherries or blueberries, a little handhold of green, and. Um, I push bland and in two minutes I am out the door. That's with like, my breakfast. that's identical to us. That's like and seriously, I, almost identical. So that's awesome. And then what about the rest of the day? Lunch is usually soup. I, I make a soup of the week. Um, you know, all the, all the leftover vegetables in the, and I throw in beans and, uh, so yeah, it's a soup of the week or a salad usually. And then I, like I usually have some, a carrot or an apple I bring with me or a cucumber. So some vegetable fruit, um, I get home, I have some nuts as my snack before dinner. And then dinner is some form of clean protein. I love what, you know, gra something grass fed, organically raised, not something from a feedlot right. along or, or wild fish like salmon or something like that with at least a double portion of vegetables. And I usually, I mean, we don't really have much rice or bread yeah, or, either. I mean, that's like an anniversary celebration. I might right. have something <laughs> like that. Ah, interesting. Yeah, we do 95-5. We have a 95-5 rule. Um, dark chocolate yeah. for dessert. I, I so probably, we actually you know, make uh, something called Brain in Love and Brain on Joy, which are two, mm -hmm. Uh, one, it's sort of like a Hershey bar, but it's sugar-free, dairy-free, has nine grams of fiber. Uh, Brain on Joy is like an Almond Joy, except no sugar, no dairy, and it tastes awesome. So we're huge so fans chocolate. of chocolate. But let's get into some of the controversial stuff, uh, okay. like caffeine and alcohol. Okay. So, so I'd love I your thoughts a, on that. I think there's a J-shaped curve here. And there's some people who can't control themselves and they really just shouldn't touch it. So if you could really have one cup of coffee or maybe two cups of um, matcha tea, I'm totally okay with that. But some people are, they, they can't stop at that little bit or they get that pigment and benefit. They overdo it and they clearly cause harm. But I've probably, probably outlined at least six studies that if you're having um, a moderate portion of tea or ca caffeine um, that there's good benefit that there's benefit to the brain and if you do more then it's harmful it's like crazy um, and I would say the same thing if, of the all alcohol the only benefit I could find was specifically associated with red wine and it was really modest portions it's not like more is better so of the controversy. And I realize there's many people who the idea of having one glass of wine with dinner is just impossible. They're going to never be able to do that. So I'm, I, I'm okay with those two groups, provided it's at a very small serving per day and um, definitely not more. So, so when I rehabilitate brains and I do that all the time, um, Caffeine constricts blood flow to the brain. Mm -hmm. And we actually don't let people have caffeine the day of their scans because the scans we do, uh, the spec studies are blood flow studies and caffeine can constrict blood flow up to 30% in the brain. Now I'm with you, if somebody has a cup or two of coffee a day, it's probably not going to hurt them. But when they're at four, five, six, and you know, one Starbucks mm -hmm. venti is three. So, yes, um, that great, exactly. In, in fact, it's six. You know, if you think of a cup of coffee um, at six ounces, isn't there small 12 ounces? Um, I, mean, I, I have so. to look at that. Yeah. But, but the venti is 330 milligrams of caffeine. And that's the American Psychiatric Association actually says that's an addiction level. So just one of those. So yes. the cup size matters. And then alcohol, um, there's a study from Johns Hopkins that say people who drink every day have smaller brains. 
And I always say when it comes to the brain, size matters. It's the only organ in your body where size mm -hmm. really does matter. You don't want a smaller brain. So, I mean, if you have two glasses of wine a week, it's not a big problem. If you have two glasses of wine a day, it's a big problem. And at least from what we've seen on the imaging work mm -hmm. we do. But I actually, I would say the hard liquor and beer is, there was no, ben, I could find no benefit even in small quantities for hard liquor and beer. Yeah, I'd we've actually, that's arm. sort of what we found is that, and, and, we, and we would agree with you that the problem is most people, they sort of fudge on how much they're actually drinking. And oh, they, they just forget. can't, well, and they can't, they just can't, most people can't just have that one. There are a few people, there are some mm -hmm. people, a small percentage of the population that they can have a small amount mm -hmm. and they don't need more or they don't want mm -hmm. more because they don't like being out of control. But for whatever reason, that's not, that's not the majority of people. So if you're one of those people, then you probably shouldn't, you know, do it. Cause it's not Absolutely. good for your brain. And I would actually say in your population, when you're dealing with someone with an injured brain, is not the same as these global right. studies I'm looking at from Australia or France or the Netherlands, where they're looking at healthy people right. and who have healthy habits. We're talking so about people who it's 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 like a it's a I don't know if you want to call it genetic, but it's it's like through your family, your heritage, like there's been problems. So that's and you yeah, it's probably best to just avoid the whole thing. But you know, one so of the yeah, kickers okay. for me, the New York Post uh, had this headline: "Cancer, it's your fault." And what they found was 70 to 90 percent of cancers were environmentally driven and alcohol directly increases the risk of seven different cancers. And so I'm just thinking women to myself, are more decreased judgment, more domestic violence, more car accidents, mm -hmm. now cancer, um, less is probably better. Less is better. At least uh, for the population we see. Um, so what, what are your favorite stories uh, from the Better Brain Solution or the patients uh, that you see in your Florida clinic? Because uh, mm -hmm. ultimately that's what people remember. Well, I commonly have people come in. Like I had a, a woman recently who came in from New York who had brain fog. She couldn't remember where she put stuff. She was foggy. She'd been on all these series of strict diets, all these intense exercise routines. She couldn't lose weight. And when we, I actually measured her blood sugar, she had elevated blood sugar, the number one strongest predictor of cognitive decline and memory loss. So even though she was dieting and working out like a fiend, um, and I think they put her on several, she'd been on through several low fat diets. It wasn't working for her and she couldn't think right. And what we, when I just said, try this, you know, add these 10 foods, meet these nutrient needs, um, be active, but you, I don't want you killing yourself two, three hours a day and being all stressed over it. Right. Within immediately, within a week or two, she was startled at her brain fog started to lift and go away. And she felt so much better. Within a month, her blood sugar was normal. Within two months, she had lost eight pounds and never gained it back. And her cognitive performance on our cognitive tests we do improved by about 60%. And But she feels so much better. It's the quality of life difference that's better than any of her blood sugar or cognitive testing numbers. She's fantastic. And I, that's a common theme that when you give someone the right food, nutrients, activity, help them manage their stress, take out a few toxins. You do those five simple steps like we offer with our program. And it's amazing the results. We know you can shrink artery plaque. And now we know that you can improve your brain function, not only try to prevent memory loss, but improve the brain you've got. Yep. And that's what I love about the work you two are doing too, is it's about a better brain. It's not just delaying right. or you know it's not just fighting alzheimer's disease it's giving someone a better brain immediately yeah we, so we have grateful. a kinship for sure yeah this is good 
Yes, and that's the exciting thing about the brain. It continues to make new neurons, especially in a part of the brain called the hippocampus, uh, which is Greek for seahorse. So the hippocampus makes up to 700 new cells every day. So I think of your brains producing these little baby seahorses, and your behavior is either increasing that number or decreasing it. It's increasing the health of the babies or it's murdering them you know, in essence. So your behavior matters in, in such a huge, in a huge way. Um, any final thoughts before we have to wrap up? Well, my biggest one was, I think most people procrastinate. They're waiting for some, you know, it's like yeah. a heart, they're waiting for a heart attack to change. Okay. They waited too long. <laughs> they're waiting for a stroke to change. Okay. That was way too long, but especially for your brain, don't wait until you notice cognitive decline because by that point by the time you're forgetful you have to reread you know a pair you know a paragraph in a book you can't find your keys you're in trouble finding your car in the parking lot by that point your brain is shrunk it's really hard to reverse it it's so much easier to prevent that mm -hmm. and to stay sharp so my pitch to all of your listeners would be i think the three of us are very much on the same page we want people to have a wonderful, glorious life, eat fantastic food, but don't wait. Start right now. Make your brain better. Yes. And that's my really message to people is take action, get started today with the foods we've talked about, the steps we've mentioned. That's really the solution to a better brain. Agree. Great. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us on the Brain Warriors Way podcast, Dr. Stephen Masley. Yes, wonderful. The Better Brain Solution coming January 2nd. In March, he'll have a national public television special to support the book. Thanks so much, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Brain Warriors Way podcast. Go to iTunes and leave a review and you'll automatically be entered into a drawing to get a free signed copy of The Brain Warrior's Way and The Brain Warrior's Way Cookbook we give away every month.